All right. <laughs> got our Fin Tips Friday with, with Dustin and Eric. We've got uh, tax retirement strategies for the end of the year. We've got four tips and a bonus. Show me four, Dustin. Four tips. That's what I'm That's talking That's right. About. Before we jump in, though, I got, I got something for you. You always talk about my Uncle Jerome. Uncle Jerome, I, he's talking. I, I yeah, he's talking. Oh. Do you see the resemblance? Do you, do you see it? Really in that that sort of angry mouth. Yep. Yeah, the I mean, angry mouth. That's he's what got is. the same mouth I do. So yeah. if I just don't talk at all and I yeah. just sit for a second. He's, I mean, not a bad looking guy for being older. He's got a big forehead. Uh, I don't know if I do or not. Maybe you do. Maybe it's your uncle. See? Yeah. Angry mouth. <laughs> yeah. I like it. I, I'll take the forehead. I mean, what, what are you going to do about nah, the forehead? I, I'm just kidding. Just you kidding. ever want to really we're, we're upset? We're all getting a big forehead. It's called receding hairline. That's right. It, it gets bigger by the year. Exactly. You ever want to upset your wife? Say something about her forehead. Okay. <laughs> there, there was, that was on a movie or something. If you ever want to upset a woman, you say something that they can't possibly change. Oof. Yeah. Okay. Good. Then you're done. Yeah. Done for. Well, I'll... I'll, I'll Make that note. Uh, let's let's not start our Friday off getting people in fights. Though. Right. right? Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. So uh, so I'm, I'm going to take it. So we've got four different tips. Four. So uh, <laughs> number one is know your standard deduction if you're looking to do a large charitable contribution. Who is ch given to charity this year? I did. You did? Yeah. I meant like, <laughs> who are we as good people to give to charity? Like, I don't. I can't come back from that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I know of last year was a huge charitable year, of course, and uh, so getting outside of your standard deduction wasn't such a big deal. Did I interrupt you? Are you trying to talk? Yeah. Yeah. It's all good though. Okay. I'll, I'm, no, I'm letting you go. But it's just kind of like this year. Are you? Do people feel more charitable? And the the way I'm trying to say that is, yeah, in a down market. It's hard to feel charitable. True. So one of the things that people you see this everywhere. I keep seeing the word bunching. Bunching charitable contributions because yeah, um, there's two ways. Do you want to talk about it? No, nope, I'm listening. I'm good to, to go. Okay, you're doing great. So there's two things you can do. Number one, you can be charitably inclined, and you say, "Well, I'm still going to do this, right? Even if I don't get to the standard deduction, eh, you may want to try to get over it." Um, the other thing you can do is this bunching thing that everybody's talking about. It's just assigning a word to something that we already did, uh, but the concept is you have something you want to give. But you don't want to give it this year because you won't go over the standard deduction. So what do you do? You wait till next year. Well, wait a minute. That doesn't make sense because I don't get any benefit this year. So by bunching those dollars into a donor advised fund, okay, the, the contribution's been made. Now you can go give the money five years from now if you want. You can give it right away. You can do whatever. So that's what they mean by bunching. The key thing that I think you're trying to say is that make sure you're over that standard deduction because it is higher. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so for 2022, check this out. It is a single married filing separately, 12,950 or married filing separately, married filing jointly, 259 or head of household, 194. Uh, we're coming up we're right at the end of the year. If you are looking to make charitable contributions, maybe you've already made a lot and you want to consider itemizing. You've got to think through, well, what can you itemize? You can itemize, you know, interest on the mortgage. Uh, you can itemize charitable contributions. There's a lot that can be looked at there. Well, if you're right on the brink of 29, 25, nine, and you're married, and maybe you haven't made the large charitable contribution, you're trying to figure out, do it this year or next, know this standard deduction because this will be helpful for you. And then potentially you can itemize and uh, maybe yeah. get a little bit of a tax break there. Plus there's nothing worse than giving to charity and finding out you didn't get over the standard deduction. Yeah, well, the, du the <laughs> double joking the, people. The, the double standard deduction does uh, change that, and for some people, that that is really something. They yeah. say, "Hey, you know, I don't get a tax benefit. Why should I do it now?" But um, that's that's all. You know, to each his own on that one. I I won't. You know, I I've got my views on that. You gave I, already. I I You're gave. Done. Yep. Regardless of chair, of the standard deductions, I'm giving. I. Uh... I gave two. I just happened to give a whole lot more than I thought I would once I went back and added it up. And yeah. I was like, well, that's not a bad thing. I guess we're going to be itemizing this year. Yeah. It was a problem. Okay, number two, what do you got? I'm number get, two. waiting to get to a point where I can hold up the four. <laughs> uh, number two is tax deferrals. So, uh, so, you know, I think, you know, hey, let's be transparent with everybody here because we actually just got the 401k going. Hell yeah. With Jazz Wealth. Yeah. You know, we've, we've added... Uh, some what, new what kind people. of advisor doesn't have their own 401k like that ate me up i'm like we got to do it yeah well and there's there's other plans that are out there for smaller yeah. businesses but we got to a point where it's like hey this makes sense we need something out here so yeah. we added that but we didn't get to add it until later in the year right 
by doing that, then now we're at a, we're at a spot where, you know, we want to capitalize on that as much as possible. And so you can make, you can go in and change it. You've still got a little bit of time, not much. Yep. Let's just say that you don't want to pay as much tax this year. Hey, you can defer more up to the maximum amount for the end of the year. Now, one thing to remember though, this was a cool question that a client had asked just the other day and I was scratching my head. I'm like, man, I had to think through it. The payroll contributions. So if for this person, let's give the example that, you know, the 23rd starts the new payroll uh, or the new pay cycle. Okay. And then if you get it on the 23rd is it when it starts and then it ends on, in January or even at the end of the month, but payroll doesn't run until in January, mm -hmm. the contribution on that check to your 401k or employer plan is going to show up as a January contribution. Yeah. So make sure you're aware of that. Now you're at this make or break time. If you're wanting to do something like that, uh, think through it now. I know we've been, uh, we've been taking advantage of some 401k contributions this well, year for the last little bit. I was going to say, get ready. I'm about to ask you an uncomfortable question because you said in the spirit of transparency. So let's see what happens. Let's uh, go. But I want to add one little thing to that is that some 401k plans will allow you to backdate your contribution. Not all of them, please don't tell me that yours will or won't, yeah. but uh, you can actually uh, bunch, there's that word again, your contributions and they'll allow you either a 30 or 60 day window to go back. That's not every year and I can't say that that's for 2023, so depending on when you're watching this, uh, but you might just check with them and say, hey, I've got an extra two grand I wanna put back there. And now, uncomfortable question, Mr. Eric, would you like to tell everybody what percentage of your salary you're contributing to the 401k this year? <laughs> would you? Yeah, sure. Considering we didn't start late. We, we started very late. Yeah. Uh, I, think, I think I'm gonna be right at the brink of maxing this thing out uh, mm -hmm. for the year, uh, 92%. 92. That yep. was the max I could do. I, I've had a paycheck. My last paycheck was five dollars. Five oh one, actually. Because I saw it go something, through. and then the, yeah. the next one was uh, sixteen. Because you know, had a different little bonus there. Some things we'd set up. So, uh, so yeah. It's funny because we started so late. So when they asked us what we want to contribute, I picked ninety two because that's my favorite number. So I was like ninety two percent. The goal, obviously, we're trying to fill it up because we're running out of months and everything. So everybody gets a kick out of this around here. That it's like you're contributing like your whole paycheck, but yeah. Whatever, it's better than paying the tax. Yep, yep, there's some strategy that comes into play there. Number three, <laughs> I'm three. almost there. Three. What you got, what you got for number three? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Rebalancing, uh, this, this is an interesting one. So I, I'm gonna go with three different things for number three. Uh, yes. Rebalance, investment strategy, tax loss harvest. So with a rebalance, Think through it. Uh, be careful with that, though, because I know uh, you've done videos on this. Yeah. And the fact that doing a rebalance isn't always the best idea, especially in a down market, because now you're buying potentially more of something that you don't want or or you're changing things up, especially in this one is really weird right now because bonds and stocks have Tough fallen year. so much. Tough year. A lot different than the most. Investment strategy. Review it moving forward. If you haven't been able to handle the volatility this past year, um, maybe not right this second. We always say don't don't try to to change it when you're in a down market. But as things start to rebound, think through this a bit. If you can't handle the volatility, maybe your plan doesn't need you to have more risk. Then reevaluate. Maybe go to a bit more conservative. And the biggest one, I kind of think we've uh, I've kind of beat this one a bunch in videos, but uh, tax loss harvest. You know, you're down to the brink here. Tax loss yep. harvesting, a lot of people get confused with it. You have to be careful. The biggest rule is wash sale rules that yep. come into play. But the easiest way to think of this is if you were to have a portfolio and let's say that you have, you know, $10,000 in gains and $10,000 in losses. Well, if you sold it all off, then you've basically taken your gains and taken your losses there so you don't have a tax liability. Yep. So that's, that's just a very simple form of putting it. There's a lot that can come into play there. But Three things I will add to your three things oh, to, to like go that. in depth there. Uh, number one, yes, you never slow your portfolio down when the market is down, right? So you you can say, I don't like this, this doesn't feel good. I'm going to want to uh, control the risk a little bit and slow things down. Do it when things recover. It's hard to do, but you do it then. Tip number two, if you have any cryptocurrency at all in 2022, then I don't wanna hear this talk about you can't handle volatility. You just stick with the portfolio you have because what a wild ride in crypto. Uh, and tip number three, I forgot. Yep. <laughs> <I'm> just, <laughs> it'll hit me there. Oh, rebalancing. End, end of the year. Yeah. Uh, rebalancing. 
Um, if you have a work plan that has limited options, rebalancing, I can actually show where that doesn't make sense. But we say it this way because a lot of 401k plans and things, they let you invest in anything. Or we could be talking about an IRA where you can invest in anything. Okay, rebalance. But if you have a limited number of choices there, we've actually done a class for clients where we show what if you never rebalanced? What if you rebalanced every year, every quarter, and every month? What would happen if you never rebalanced nine times? Well, I think it was... 8.6 8 times out of 10. I'm just going to say 8 times out of 10, you beat every other thing that you, every other rebalancing you can do. Nice. Yeah. And uh, as we as we move on to number four, I just realized there it is. Yeah. There it is. Number four. Tip number four. So, so we're not just using these two cameras. We also have that camera. Oh, we're, we're fully. I, I haven't been talking to everybody the whole time. Hey. I've been talking to everybody, not talking to everybody. And I'm I've not been... even looking anyone in the eye today. I just, that's going to be my thing. I'm just going to walk like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're going to be the awkward person. He's really realizing how weird I really have become. Oh, no, I've known that. Okay. I've known it. Pick uh, right up on that. All right, so number four. Number four. All right, there it is. There it is. RMDs benef and beneficiaries. So for RMDs, check this out. If you are at the end of the year, you have to do the RMD now. If you don't do the RMD and you have to take it for whether it's an inherited account or for your own personal retirement account, you are going to get taxed a penalty of 50% next year on this. So make sure you're taking your RMDs before the end of the year. Can I add one thing to that so that there are no negative comments that you get all sad about and then ruins your day? Yeah, do it. <laughs> yes, um, if it's your first year taking an RMD um, and you're of the age where you have to take your RMD, you, you, have, you don't have to do it by the end of the year, yes. but only in that first year. So don't worry about that. And that's because we don't know what your account balance is until the last day of the year. Second of all, the 50% penalty, good news on that front. They may be lowering it to Drum 25%. Roll. That's what I'm talking about. I don't know if it passed. I think, I, I think it passed already, but I'm not sure what year it goes through. Okay. Taking the 50 down to the 20. I, I hadn't seen that yet. Yeah. So well, yeah, you your boy keeps up knowledge. on stuff. Bring yeah, that he keeps knowledge. up on it. You know? I don't yeah. always get it right, but I keep up on it. All right, and then uh, and and also with number four, beneficiaries. No, beneficiaries. no, that's five. We but, don't want five. We want four. You're saying four A. Also under number four. Yeah, I had four A, four B. Because you know four B. Okay, things. I'll take yeah, that. Yeah, there we go. Four give B. Me five. Okay, so, I can't do five. <laughs> four B, beneficiaries are something really important that you want to review oh, yeah. because if you have a will set up and you go in and you put in that you want to leave the money to your kids and then your beneficiary is still your ex-spouse, you're stuck and the money, the beneficiary trumps the will and they are going to get that money. So make sure if you've had any changes throughout the year, review your beneficiaries, make sure those are up to date. Uh, can I add something to that too? Yeah, absolutely <laughs> so can. just because I've lived through it and somebody commented on this and I was like, I, I had flashbacks of this nastiness I had to go through. Yeah. If you have an IRA and you're married, or this is different now, IRA or 401k, so um, let's say it's, uh, pick an account, 401k or IRA. IRA. Okay, IRA, I'm gonna go that way. So if you have an IRA and you put your kids as a beneficiary and you did not tell your spouse, then your spouse actually can contest that. And your spouse is the rightful owner of that account. If you are married, your spouse is supposed to be the beneficiary. You cannot put somebody else secretly. Your girlfriend can't go on there. You can't have you know the SPCA or anything um, unless, your wife fills out a form, has it notarized and medallion stamped that says, I understand that I will not be the beneficiary of this account. If that's not on file, then it probably is going to your wife. Yeah, 401ks have that when you're, we're rolling it over. And uh, we've got that big bonus in a minute, but with the 401ks. Yep, that one doesn't require the form. It, it, but, but it's there, you know, it's wanting to make sure yeah. that you, you have, you dot the I's, cross the T's, that your spouse is aware. TSP accounts now just added one because they updated their site so that if you're doing it and you do a rollover out of a TSP to an IRA, it will, you'll have to enter your wife's email and then nice. yeah, it will, or, or husband's, whichever, or whatever the case is there, but they will have to then approve that yep. so that it, it goes through. So my my cool. flashback there was that stinking, uh, there was a husband and wife, I'll keep it short, but they got divorced. Okay. And so she still wanted to, you know, technically it was still part of hers, but even though they were divorced and she wasn't named the beneficiary and it was a girlfriend that was the new benefit, he moved on. I mean, I, yeah. this was heartless kind of stuff, but boy, you start getting into that and you're like, wait, <laughs> everybody just stop for a second. Yeah. Let's figure this out. <laughs> I felt like the wedding crashers guy, like the, the arbitrators there. Yeah. <laughs> you give them some miles and they'll give you some miles. And, there you ooh, go. Tough one. 
All right, and number five, since we're moving past, I'm going to go with number five. <laughs> okay, well, that's all you now because I got <laughs> that's nothing. That's all I got. That's yeah. all I got. All right, and so number five, we have an end-of-the-year checklist. If you check down below, you can download that. Uh, it's free. It allows you to at least go through some things, check out you know, what you need to do as far as end of the year. Just gives you some different ideas there as well. To uh, If you haven't thought of stuff, it's good, good stuff to look at. We're giving away free stuff? Yeah, we absolutely are. You know, it's, it's, it's the holiday season. Did it's HR Christmas approve time. that? Sure. Why I want not? to talk to Kathy on six about that. Uh, you know, you could you could talk to uh, Goldman Sachs on the eighth floor. Have you ever noticed that they have the whole eighth floor? That was Folio. They had the old. Yeah, yeah Folio has the old. Well, Goldman Sachs has Goldman Sachs. the whole building in Jersey City. So yeah. uh, I used to work in the building next door, and we'd be like, "Oh wow, look at that building." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that face uh, all right well and on that note i guess it's time to get back to work brought my coffee cup to the, to the table again today baby i love it yeah you do got to get back to work uh enjoy thanks for watching everybody and have a great weekend we'll see you soon thank you